Hello, and welcome to Skull Squadron Sims Passion Project. Thank you guys for looking into this and downloading this project. Uh, just to give a quick background, um, I was a young kid in the 1980s, and I remember running home from school to watch my favorite robot jet transforming anime series and this was such a big part of my young childhood that it kind of led me into falling in love with animation uh, looking into 3D CAD programs in the early 1990s and this eventually helped me land a career in the animation industry so this has been a huge part of my life and this is my passion project, my I guess homage or my tribute to an anime series that I just love so much and I know so many other people out there are huge fans. And many of us are, dare I say, much much older <laughs> than you would expect. Um, so this is my video on how to set up this project. Obviously this is going to be a sort of like a mod downloads situation. So you will download the zip file from uh, Skull Squadron Sins itch.io. And once you've downloaded that, you're going to find your community folder in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, if you haven't done something like this before, there's lots of uh, YouTube videos or uh, things online where you can find where this community folder is and you will unzip the file and place the folder inside that community folder. Now obviously once you load up Microsoft Flight Simulator and you get to this place. So now we're here on the tarmac. Uh, we're ready to see what this jet can do. All right, so I actually use, believe it or not, I use um, a Xbox 360. This reason, Xbox 360 joystick uh, with my PC, and I have um, dedicated hotkeys to my joystick. Now, hotkeys are going to be the make or break for you to really enjoy this project. Now, I have done lots of things to put buttons in the cockpit, which I'll show you later, but key binding is going to be a key aspect of enjoying this game. So I, I'm using this Xbox, uh, sort of like a 360 controller, and what I've done is I've uh, mapped several transformations and hot and um, hotkeys to each of these buttons. Now, if you haven't done uh, binding keys before, there are plenty of tutorials on YouTube on how to do that. But just to give you an idea, if I hit the Y button, or <laughs> that, yes, I hit the Y button, and that's going to show you that for this particular Y button, I've uh, binded it to the toggle wing lights. And I'm going to show you what that is, those toggle wing lights do. Um, but I'm going to, there is, I'm going to show or put up an image right now of some key binding suggestions that I have for you. And I think this would be a great start. There are about uh, 14 to 15 controls that you will do some key binding with. Also for the keyboard, um, you could go over to the keyboard and uh, create sort of a new keyboard uh, hotkeys page for yourself. And I've gone through and for the most part, I've mapped all of my controls to the number pad using the right control R. So I'm going to do a Right control zero. Let's see here. Let's search by input. 
right control plus number zero. Oops, let's go over here. And you're going to see toggle wing lights. Okay. And then if I do a right control delete, you're going to see toggle spoilers. And so on and so forth. So I've done a right control one all the way up through nine. And then I've also uh, mapped things to right control number lock panel. This is uh, with the panel lights on. And you can see right control backslash is panel lights off. And then, you know, right control star, toggle taxi lights. And then right control plus. Oops, let's see, right control plus, toggle pedestal lights, and so forth. So number zero through nine, and then all of the ones around uh, the number keypad have controls uh, attached to them. And I think for a starter, if you just take that uh, suggested keypad uh, hotkey bind list that I'm including, it will be inside uh, the packages folder, um, and it will be under uh, PDF manuals uh, folder, and you will find um, uh, lots of information. So before you get started, I would highly recommend you print out uh, or read uh, my README text, which I've also put in PDF form, but I would highly recommend you print out the hotkey binding. Because if for something happens, you get kind of lost and, oh shoot, I've, I've got myself into a jam, I don't know how to get back to, uh, from this, this transformation has gone uh, terribly awry, and how do I get back to the root? Um, then you will need that. So, just to discuss how this jet is set up, the jet will be what I call the default position. And from the default position, we will go into our different transformation ideas. Okay. So let's go ahead and look inside the cockpit here. So inside the cockpit here, uh, we have all types of controls. Uh, you could kind of move uh, your pointer around and you can see we do have a pitch uh, and trim control that we can uh, take care of there as well as a rudder, rudder uh, trim and whatnot. Then, uh, you know, starting from here, we uh, have the master battery. We have our start engine buttons. These are normally on if, let's say you're at the one of the gates at the airport and you start off the game and the engine's turned off. So you would want to turn on master battery and then you'll want to push in the start engine button. And then you're going to want to do control E, which is to start all systems. And then that will warm up the jet turbines, which will kick in jet engine number two as well, and so forth. And then you can, uh, you know, back away from the gate and go to the um, takeoff uh, zone. So just so that you know, I have pretty much uh, everything every button in here that can kind of get you started without using hotkeys, but I still recommend you use hotkeys in case you find yourself in a situation where uh, because of the transformation or, or how uh, the camera is set up, you aren't able to quite see all the controls and get to them easily. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is once I kind of get in the cockpit, um, I like to set up cameras. Now, uh, there are some hotkeys for cameras here. Um, you know, if you hold control space bar, that'll kind of take you uh, to the default camera space. Now, I like to roll my, uh, on my mouse, the roller button and kind of, I like to give myself a wider uh, camera angle. But just real quick, if you obviously hold the down arrows, you can move the camera down, uh, up, left and right. Now, because this jet transforms and everything, I've left boundaries off. So if you wanted to, you could literally go outside of the plane. Um, but, you know, for the most part, you should just stay here in the cockpit and everything will happen around you. 
the other thing is that um, if you hold down Alt and the up arrow, you can move forward. If you hold down Alt and the back arrow, you can move in reverse, okay? Rather than just um, uh, using your roller mouse. Your roller mouse is more of a camera angle. The Alt, forward and back is more of a camera position, okay? So, for example, you know, if I spin around, you know, we can see um, our uh, pilot here. Um, he's kind of got some pretty basic, you know, head rotations on him that uh, kind of look in the direction you're flying or you're steering. Um, and again, I highly recommend you just spend time just kind of setting up a nice camera angle for you. Now, there are two la uh, positions, camera positions, we'll, I'll be discussing with you in a bit that are very important. But first, just to get started, you know, just going through, we have our parking brake. And uh, what I'm doing is uh, if I hold this down, you'll see a normal and emergency. I would just leave it on normal. Emergency doesn't quite have the effect that I was expecting. It kind of, uh, uh, I would just keep the, by holding left, just stay in normal. But if you hold the right mouse button down, just tap it, you'll see that that goes on and off. Now, I don't have to hold that down. I can just hit tap the right and mouse key, and you'll see also the brakes are working. If I hold down my X button on my controller, um, you can see my, my brakes are working there. That's how you normally would brake or whatever you use for your braking button. Um, that's down there. Also, if I uh, hold my rudder controls, uh, you can see that um, we're also getting that interaction on the feet down below. Um, now we have flaps here. And so everything on here is working. If I go zoom in, um, and let's go into the cockpit, and I pull the flaps down, you're going to see both front and rear flaps working. The middle position works as well. Uh, another thing that we can do here is... Um, is there is a pilot button, maybe you can't see, but pilot display on and off, so, um, you know, you can see our pilot turning on and off there. And that happens in here. I was using the hotkey, but I can always use the key inside. We also have our heat shield. So if I turn that on, you can see our heat shield going on and turn it off. You can see our heat shield going away. Um, now I also have battle armor included. So right now this plane is how we would normally see it. Um, you know, without battle armor, if you're not familiar with battle armor. In the anime series, it's just sort of like um, added armor that had more boost and weapons and whatnot. But here, if you turn this on, you can see that our battle armor will come on. And uh, here you can see with a nice cool feature of sort of the turbines in there kind of spinning around. but. Uh, this is our battle armor, and that turns off as well with the hotkey. Um, pilot display. One thing with the battle armor on, I turn on the battle armor, is some people, uh, you know, may not want these stabilizers on. So inside the cockpit, I had the vertical stabilizer display on off. there so now that the you're not seeing those rear wings necessarily 
but a hotkey can always turn them on. Um, another thing is we turn the armor off. I also have what's called elevator wings. Now I personally like elevator wings, but in the anime series, um, the legs do not have rear elevators. Um, but if I go ahead and turn on elevator wings, you will see that we have rear elevator wings now. And of course, uh, if the armor's on, then it will just go on on top of that. Um, I kind of like the look of it. So, you know, it just depends on um, what you're feeling. If you want those, uh, you could turn either of those off or have those back on. All right. So, um, also we have panel lights on, so at night, um, there's actually a really nice, if I go into options here, and if I make it dark, uh, we've got some really nice panel lights in here in the cockpit. Um, we also have some really nice taxi lights um, on the outside of the plane. So here we've got uh, just some really nice looking taxi lights. All right. And uh, let's go back to. All right. Now other features that are uh, included here, again, um, I've tried to put everything, uh, we have our landing gear off to the side here. We also have a working uh, GPS monitor here so you can plan your courses if you like and uh, go to different airports, whatever you like, you have that there. These two monitors don't necessarily, they just are pretty much um, just don't touch. They're just kind of like they're there. They always will show uh, this view so you'll have a kind of a top map view and you'll have a mute view which they work great for night flying um, and so those will just always be on. If you want to plan anything or, or do any kind of uh, tra traveling between airports then I would use this uh, GPS map up here. Now Going down to some other uh, features, we have our air brakes. So if I slide on the air brakes, you can see the air brakes come on. And so this is great for, um, this plane is very fast. So if you need to slow down in a hurry, um, cut your throttle. You know, you, we've got working throttles over here. Whoops, let me. Uh, we've got our working throttles. Um, air brake will definitely be your friend, especially for landing. And then we also have our wing sweep. Okay, so if I hit Control Zero, I have my wing sweep set up to that. If I hold Control Delete, I have my air brake. Hot key there. Okay. And um, and then we're going to start getting into our actual transformation modes. Um, so what we're going to want to do here is I have Battleoid, Guardian mode, and Guardian Battleoid after Guardian mode. So there is while you're flying, you don't have to do this, but one thing, if you want to land in guardian mode, there's a particular thing we have to do. Um, if you're in the air, you can change into battleoid or guardian mode at, at any time and not have to worry about this. But this is specifically for landing. Okay. So imagine right now we are 
you know, our landing gear wheels are on the ground, and if we're going to land in, jet, in a jet mode, we're landing on the wheels. If we want to land with our legs down, well, um, with the software, what I've the idea I came up with and how I made this work was that I'm going to raise the model of the jet higher up, and this is where two camera views will become important. If you go up to your camera view here, uh, we're going to see smart, uh, sorry, under pilot, we're going to see pilot, landing, and HUD. So right now we're in pilot view. If I hit landing, select landing, you're going to see the camera zoomed up and out. So now I'm actually above the aircraft. Uh, if I hit pilot, I'm going to be back in the pilot seat. So think of it this way. If you're going to be landing in Guardian or Battleoid mode, you have to be in with the landing camera. And there are hotkeys for this. The landing hotkey, at least on my computer, is F11, and pilot view is F10. So let's say we're flying, and I decide I want to land in Guardian mode. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this button and the plane will move up to the guardian mode landing position. Okay. Now in this position, I'm going to hit F11, which will take me into the landing camera. And now I'm here, um, you know, in the cockpit so I can now land in guardian mode. Now, let's say I wanted to be in guardian mode or battleoid mode. Let's start with battleoid. So I'm going to go into battleoid mode. And the wing sweep I can control at any time. That's my control zero. So Battleoid mode right now I have under control four. Okay, so control four. Now I'm in battleoid mode. Now I can land in this position. Just imagine that the wheels are still here on the ground, but the model has moved up. Okay. Now while in battleoid mode, the pilot is on, so I probably typically would want to, you know, this is where a hotkey would get, you know, I can do hide the pilot. Uh, or if you just move your camera around a little bit, um, I like to kind of widen my camera angle. That way I can um, normally I can look down and I can still see all the controls. So I can turn the pilot on or off still and I could still hit the battle weight button and uh, these control panels raise up to give you easier access to them when you're in battle weight mode um, so when I look down I can see them a little more easier um, so those are available uh, okay, so let's say I can land in battleoid mode, I can land in guardian mode, so let's go into guardian mode. Okay, so here we could land in such a way. So, um, let me go through these buttons. So my control, I'm just going to show you the interior. So I can go from Guardian to uh, the, the second battleoid pose, um, which goes directly from Guardian. So this pose goes from Jet to battleoid, Fighter to battleoid. This goes from Fighter to Guardian. And then this pose goes from Guardian to Battleoid. So please keep that in mind. So you have to be in Guardian mode to then use this next mode. Okay. 
So here we can see that it's a difference with, uh, he's got the rifle in the right hand, and the other battle lord pose, he's holding the rifle with both hands. Okay, so we're, you know, we could clearly fly around in this level, or we can try landing in this level, but just remember that you have to raise yourself up off the ground and change the camera view so that you can be flying in this position uh, when you're going to land um, uh, in battle or guardian mode. Now, the way you have to get back to jet is you have to go in reverse. So we go back to battle uh, guardian mode. And then from here, whoops. And then we'll go back to fighter mode by going back. All right. So now everything is back to normal. Um, oh, one thing that I forgot to mention let's do uh, tarmac poses. So now that I'm still off the ground, uh, let's go into guardian mode. Now let's say I want to sort of be landed. Um, so guardian tarmac pose, I have to be in guardian mode, guardian tarmac pose. And that's going to kind of bring me back down to the ground, okay? And like I said, you know, wings, you can use wings at any time. Those are always available. Now, if you want to be in the cockpit, you just hold down on your camera and you'll eventually be, uh, get there. But, you know, since this is mostly a parking pose, I normally uh, don't go there. But um, I have this set up to control six. And that will kind of get me back uh, to that position. Now, if I want to stand, be in battleoid standing pose, now I have to go into guardian to battleoid. And then I'm going to hit battleoid stand pose. All right. So now we're in battle with stand pose here. Oh shoot, okay. So, um, let's get back to, if I hold control three, that sort of brings me back to Battleoid from Guardian, and I hold Control 2. That'll get me back to Guardian, and then I hit Control 1, and that'll get me back to Jet. And then hit Control 5, and that's kind of like me, uh, you know, turning off the landing position. And don't forget to hit F10 to go back to cockpit camera view. All right, so um, like I said, you don't necessarily, I tried to make this so you don't necessarily need hotkeys, but I highly recommend that you set up your hotkeys first. Um, that's pretty much it. Just remember, if you want to try landing in guardian mode, uh, that you definitely want to... Uh, well, let's take off. Let's just take off real quick. So... Turn off your parking brake. Let's... Uh, Put up our landing gear. All right. 
So now I'm just using my Xbox controller, and from my Xbox controller, I I can control my uh, my wings. Um, if I want to transform, I put on hot keys on my Xbox controller. So I have access to all these poses while I'm flying. And again, um, this is inside the cockpit while you're flying. It's a beautiful view. I think it's super cool. Um, it, it just gives you an angle that you just don't get in any other um, jet or flying situation. Um, and the views are just awesome. And you still have access to, you know, um, all your controls here, here on the dash. Kind of see red lights to know what's active. Uh, uh, you know, you can turn on your heat shield and still be able to see what you're doing flying and where you're going. Alright, heat shield. What a view. What a view. So let's go to guardian mode. All right. And then from guardian to jet. Turn on the armor. Like I said, if you want, you could turn the wing, the rear wing displays off if you like. And you can have something that's a little bit more like the true classic style of, of the jet fighter. Of course, we can always turn our pilot on and off. And one thing that's really nice and I recommend is uh, flying around at night is always fun. Um, th this jet has some really awesome night lights. And I think I've done a, a, a really nice job uh, making those look super cool. And of course, you can see the bat, the afterburners. Let's see the heat waves and so forth. So that's my introduction to my the setup of my flight sim squadron. I hope you guys really enjoy it. Um, some cool things that you can find is that there is a key, a trick to being able to fly Mach 7.77 and to be go up to 135,000 feet. So you guys can play around with that, see if you can discover how to do that, but it is doable. Anyway, I really hope you enjoy and um, if you really love it, please share. You know, um, all I ask is that um, I've just put so many blood, sweat, and tears into this project that I just ask that you not share. If you download it, that you just use it for your own uh, use and and uh, just you know uh, respect all the hard work I put into this. And if if someone else wa uh, wants it, then I just please please direct them to the website so they can they can download it for themselves. Um, uh, but I really hope you enjoy and I look forward to your feedback. Thank you so much. Enjoy.